Hello, it's Scott Manley. Venus, it's a hell of a place. At least that's what the space probes that land on the surface tell us. Its thick carbon dioxide atmosphere traps so much heat that the surface temperature is enough to melt lead. But spacecrafts have gone all the way down to the surface. They have taken photos and performed other information, but their life is inherently limited. Their batteries run out and moreover, they overheat and their electronics stop working. But planetary scientists would love to overcome these obstacles and create an actual long-term mobile rover on the surface of Venus. And if you have some good ideas about how to steer a rover without using semiconductors, without using lots of power, using mechanical computers, NASA has a competition for you. Some of you might remember the NASA Space Poop Challenge. Well, NASA Tournament Lab and Hero X are back and they're looking for something that might work with a purely mechanical rover. The clockwork rover concept stems from the fact that building electronics that work on Venus is hard. It's not impossible now, but it is hard. And if you can do as much of the rover functionality in mechanical computers, then we know that that works in any environment. And mechanical computers are not a new concept. In fact, the oldest computers in the world are all mechanical, going all the way back to the Antikythera mechanism, which was a mechanical computer for predicting the locations of celestial bodies. And there's a great example of a mechanical computer which has flown in space. That's the Globus navigation computer, which is on the early Soyuz and flew up until 2002. And so there are projects like the Automaton Rover for Extreme Environments, which investigate replacing as much of a rover's hardware with mechanical equivalents as possible. Energy for the system can be provided by a wind turbine, and although Venus's winds are very, very low, less than one meter per second, since they have 90 times the atmospheric pressure, that's equivalent to some pretty powerful winds. Energy from that can be stored in a spring, which can then be used to drive the wheels. Or, if you're really creative, they actually took inspiration from Theo Janssen's Strandabist and decided to build a space version concept. However, after consulting with the artist himself, they uh, decided that wheels or tracks would make much more sense. So the challenge that's being posed here is a device which will steer this, not in any particular direction, just to make sure it can go forwards until it encounters a problem and then steer in a different direction, hoping to more or less random walk their way across the surface of Venus and encounter new stuff. So the challenge specifies that the sensor should be able to push a pin with a force of about 25 newtons or about 5 pounds when an obstacle is encountered and that causes the drive system to start backing off. What are problems? Cliffs. Any slopes greater than 30 degrees going up or down or sideways. Uh, any rocks or holes bigger than 0.35 meters or about 1 foot. And, moreover, a combination of these which would lead the rover to exceed the 30 degree angle limitation. And of course it has to do all this in the most low tech way possible. The, the electronics they talk about are wires and resistors, right? Although they do say that capacitors or microchips could be considered with sufficient compelling evidence, the whole thing needs to take you know, one watt of power, and this power can come in the form of a single rotating shaft or a pair of wires to provide uh, some electrical power. And if you do come up with the best idea, there is a, an actual cash prize, $15,000 to the winner. There are going to be second and third play, place prizes. And of course, you will get mad props from people that are just blown away by your ingenuity. And let me tell you, that kind of respect is priceless. The latest RE paper that I looked at is got a lot of cool stuff in it. Mechanical logic gates, you know, mechanical computers, uh, they have their own object avoidance and navigation system and they show you how it might be linked to the steering and the wheels. They also consider other technologies such as pneumatic processors, that is, digital logic that could be performed using compressed gas. Some of the instruments that have been proposed are barometers and wind speed meters. These are obviously mechanical devices that could store data in mechanical format. But how would the data be transmitted back to space? You can't build a mechanical radio. Well, 
One idea they proposed was to have radar reflective disks that could be oriented in multiple positions. So you would have a spacecraft in orbit that would transmit a radar pulse and the type of pulse they got back would depend upon the configuration of these. So they could modulate this and send data in a continuous loop. The probe on the surface would not be listening, but it would be continually broadcasting its latest results to spacecraft that were sitting in orbit. But even with all this ingenuity on display, the designers still admitted that there were many things that would be much easier if you could just have some semiconductor logic. I mean, look at how much processing power is in something like the Raspberry Pi. Surely we just need to keep that at around 50 degrees Celsius. Well, keeping something small at that low temperature is shockingly hard. You have to be able to pump heat across to something that's 500 degrees Celsius. If you crunch the numbers, there just isn't enough power there, either from solar power or from wind power. In theory, you could use very large radio thermal isotope generators, but those also have the issue that they depend on a thermal gradient. And so if you raise the temperature of the exterior of them, then they're not nearly as efficient, so you need a much larger system. It's just a very hard problem to solve. But the other option is to develop new high temperature semiconductors and there is something that's possible in the form of silicon carbide and there's actually real interest in this beyond just making rovers work on Venus. High power electrical circuits in electric cars are starting to use silicon carbide MOSFETs. The Tesla Model 3 for example uses these. And engineers at NASA have been building and testing logic circuits and putting them in something called the Glen Extreme Environments Rig to simulate the surface of Venus. This literally is a, an oven which raises the pressure and the temperature so that engineers can see how their carefully designed hardware fares on the surface of Venus. And you know, if you paid attention to YouTube for the last few years between hydraulic presses and red hot ball bearings, I think these guys could run a really good YouTube channel. But anyway, yeah, if you put these silicon carbide electronics in there, they were able to run for 22 days non-stop at Venus temperatures, which is surely a good sign. But these chips are very simple. There are about 100 transistors. That's a long way to go to actually build a working microprocessor. The simplest microprocessor is probably the Intel 4004, which had 2300 transistors on it, whereas today's processors have billions of transistors on them. So sure, you could go with like a basic 8-bit processor with 10, less than 10,000 transistors. On top of this, you're going to need transistors for memory. And memory, dynamic RAM uses a capacitor and a transistor for every bit. So you're going to need as many transistors as you have bits of memory. For non-volatile storage, you can't just use off-the-shelf hard disks either. A lot of these... Uh, magnetic materials that are used to store the data, they lose their magnetic properties at the temperatures that they're working at. So you've got to come up with, again, something custom to store this. If you want a camera, you need to figure out how to fabricate a photodiode. Now, you maybe just need one of those. You could then use a mirror to scan an area, assuming that the scene doesn't change. Or you could try to build an array. Certainly, you're not going to be building a sensor like we have in today's cameras. The more you look at it, the more you realize there is no such thing as off-the-shelf hardware that you can use. But assuming you have a reasonable radio link, the probe doesn't need to be that smart because with a good connection, a satellite in orbit of Venus can talk directly to the space probe and it can have all the brains, it can do all the intelligent navigation and also act as a relay back to Earth. But still, there's enough places where mechanical hardware will have the edge over these primitive circuits. And so it's entirely likely that the first rovers we see running on Venus are going to be an amalgam of analog you know, mechanical technology and very simple digital logic supported possibly by a bigger set of brains in orbit. So, you know, exploring Venus via a windmill-driven wind-up clockwork rover does sound pretty darn steampunk, but they could go a little extra. They could make it sail-powered, and there is actually a sail-powered rover concept. It's called the Zephyr, and it doesn't have any of the clockwork stuff, but it does move across the surface using a sail, which is also the solar panel. This concept is definitely one of the cooler ones. Unfortunately, it's only figuratively cool, which doesn't help you against the furnace-like heat of Venus. 
So coming back to this NASA challenge, I see plenty of comments on my videos from people that clearly think that they know better than NASA. This is a perfect time for you guys to actually step up and show us how it's done. But seriously, I'm really fascinated to see what kind of results come out of this. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.